Welcome to our course on ES6. Happy to have you. In this video, I'm going to be introducing us to ES6, talking a little bit about what goes into ES6, what it is, you know, why you'd want to use it, how can we use some of the new ES6 features, and just in general, kind of talking about some of the enhancements that are coming down the pike with ES6. Now, first of all, just to talk about exactly what is ES6 and how does it relate to JavaScript. So ES6, you know, you, you might hear it called also ECMAScript 2015. ECMA, as you can see here, I'm on ECMA International site. They are the group responsible for the standardization of the ECMAScript language. And ECMA is essentially an industry association, and they say themselves are an industry association dedicated to standardization of info and communication systems. So these are the guys that make the standardization of ECMAScript possible. And a lot of people use JavaScript and ECMAScript interchangeably. Technically, they are different things, but for all intents and purposes, you can kind of use ECMAScript and JavaScript interchangeably. So when we talk about ES6 or ECMAScript or JavaScript, you know, just to be on the same page, we're, we're generally talking about the same thing. And I'm going to use ES6 to describe some of the newer features that this course is about. So basically, you just need to know that JavaScript follows ECMAScript, but they're pretty much interchangeable in terms of, uh, you know, for our purposes anyway. So you know, you can read the language specification if you like, if you go to ecmainternational.org slash ECMA262. And then, you know what, let me just zoom in here so you can read the URL. Right, so ecmainternational.org, you can just kind of search for it. And here they talk about some of the things that are coming uh, coming along. Uh, it gets into detail, right? This is the language language specification. So this is much more detailed than, than we really need at this point. But if you're curious, you can definitely check this out. You know, check out the ECMA International website if you want to learn the history of ECMA. It's, uh, it's pretty interesting, actually. Now, in terms of ECMAScript itself, um, so ECMAScript 5, ES5, was essentially finalized in December 2009. So it's been quite a few years here since they've put out a new revision. And the way it works is essentially ES6 has these standardized features, and JavaScript engines are implementing them as they, as they go. And what I mean by that is maybe sometimes something will be supported in Chrome, for example, or not supported. And, you know, it might be vice versa on a different browser. And so for that purpose, I have this site open here. And this is a super useful site called caniuse.com. And this site is awesome. So if you're ever wondering, you know, is X supported yet in so-and-so browser, you can just come to caniuse.com, type it in here, search for it, and it'll let you know right away where it's supported, where it's not supported, what browser version it's supported in. Right? And this is not only for JavaScript, this is for CSS as well as um, you know HTML stuff, like HTML5, for example. Um, and you know you can just kind of search around. So for example, if you're searching, okay, can I use class list, for example? Can I use ES6 classes? This is relevant to us, right? So ES6 classes, can I use ES6 classes? You can see it's broken down by the browser. And classes are pretty well supported across the board. IE, this is not unusual, right? IE is kind of deprecated because they're replacing it with Edge. You know, Microsoft replacing it with Edge. But ES6 classes are pretty well supported. Um, and, you know, we'll, we'll get into ES6 specifics later, of course. But another common thing with ES6 is the use of const. So it declares a constant with block level scope. Right? It's pretty well supported across the board. Even IE11 supports const. And they even show support in terms of, you know, Android browser, Chrome for Android, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, as you're writing your ES6 code, this is going to be a good resource for you to kind of come check out what is supported, what isn't. And that also brings me to my next point, which is this awesome compatibility chart. So, you know, in case you can't see the URL, you can just do a Google search for ES6 comp compatibility chart, or you can go to kangax.github.io slash compat table. ES6. Right, so let me zoom in there so you can actually read it. Right, so kangax.github.io. Oops. Like so. ES6. And so this also breaks it down by desktop browser, for example, as well as you know what compilers you want to use. We'll get into that shortly. Um, but essentially it shows that ES6, it's it's pretty well supported at this point. You know, most of the major features are in place in most of the browsers. Right, so here we can see Firefox, uh, Chrome, Safari, etc. And it's pretty pretty cool. Like these are, you know, a lot of the uh, you know, all or most of the ES6 newer features. 
and you can see that support is coming along nicely. Right? So we're not going to worry too much about compilers at this point, but you know, if you're looking, okay, I want to use something like an arrow function in my code. Is it going to be supported in my app, right? Who is your app targeting? If you're only targeting, you know, the most recent releases of Chrome, chances are it's probably supported. But you know, if we look at arrow functions, I can click on it and it brings me to the ECMAScript specification page. But um, you know, you can look, is it supported? Yes or no. So if you kind of scroll over uh, arrow functions, let's let this load here. Right over here, we can see arrow functions are pretty well supported. If you need support though for SF9, which I think is Safari 9, well, it's, it's not supported, right? So that's good to know, in which case you're gonna want to have your transpiler, you know, fix it up for you. And transpilers, again, we'll get into in a second here. So I just wanted to, to get these, you know, in your mind so that you have this in mind, right? ES6, it's not fully supported everywhere quite yet. It's getting there, definitely getting there. It is very widely supported, but you do need to be aware that, you know, if your users are using an older version of a browser or you're targeting IE, for example, you're gonna need to be able to take care of that, right? IE doesn't really have wide support of ES6 and it probably never will. Um, for obvious reasons, right? Ed Edge is the one you're going to want to target in that case. So use these resources, check them out, you know, dive into the ECMAScript language specification if you're really curious. Check out caniuse.com, uh, check out this Kangax, awesome resource to see, you know, what's supported and where. Um, now, on to ES6. And, you know, if, if you're still new to JavaScript, some of this stuff may not make sense to you, but you know what, on the other side of the coin, you're learning the newest stuff right off the bat, which is pretty nice to know. You're not going to have uh, have to learn kind of the, the older, you know, ES5 or even older versions uh, if you just want to focus particularly on ES6. And you know what, a lot of people, myself included, really like ES6. It makes a lot of quality of life improvements over ES5, and it just kind of makes it nicer to write in, uh, you know, makes it nicer to write JavaScript code. Now, I should also note that ES6 is actually a superset of ES5. And what that means is any valid ES5 code will be valid in ES6. So, for example, um, you know, I'm not going to be writing any code right off the bat, but if you're more comfortable with using var instead of let or const, and we'll get into those later, of course, if you're more comfortable doing that, that'll definitely work. You know, you don't have to use ES6 code if you're more comfortable using ES2015, you know, at any certain point. ES5 introduced some things like a for each loop or strict mode. And if you want to use those, by all means, definitely do so. And again, if, if that doesn't mean anything to you, that's totally fine. We'll, we'll be diving into those things as well. So ES6 is a superset of ES5 and also introduces a couple of other, not a couple actually, a lot of other really cool enhancements. So just to take a quick peek at this ECMAScript language standardization. Um, you know, there's, there's kind of a lot to go over, but in general, some of the major enhancements that it covers are things like um, it brings modules to the language natively, uh, class declarations, lexical block scoping, destructuring patterns, and a lot more. Now, a lot of those features were already available in JavaScript via external libraries, right? Classes and modules definitely were. So it's cool to be able to just write that natively in ES6. ES6 also introduces some nice new functionality in the standard library. For example, there's some new methods available for strings and arrays. Um, we can kind of tinker around with promises now, which is pretty cool. So it does a lot. You know, in my mind, ES6 does a lot to kind of move the language forward. Um, and it's, it's going to be beneficial to know as it becomes totally supported everywhere. Now, I think it is worth mentioning that issue of support again. So in terms of support, not all of your users on any given web app will be using the most recent version of a browser. You know, imagine the general populace, they don't always have most up-to-date versions of browsers. So you're probably going to want your code to be transpiled from ES6 into ES5. Right? So here, everything looks hunky-dory, everything looks supported, but if you start to go back a couple of versions of any given browser, chances are that certain things are not going to be fully supported anymore. That's where these compilers slash polyfills come into play. And the big one being Babel in my mind. So Babel is really the big kid on the block. And Babel is essentially a tool 
that you can use to transpile your ES6 code into ES5 code. So in our JS bin here, where we're going to be writing a bunch of our code, as you can see, I've selected in the dropdown in the JavaScript tab, ES6 Babel. And this is just going to basically transpile it in the background from ES6 code to ES5 code invisibly to us, um, which is kind of what Babel does. Um, you know, if I just did JavaScript, this it would work because I'm using the most recent version of Chrome. Um, and, you know, I talk about Chrome a lot because I use Chrome personally. Um, but if you're more used to a different browser, you know, this should still probably work. You know, Firefox, Edge, whatever you're using, it's probably supported pretty well at this point. But if I were to go back a couple of versions of Chrome, maybe the last time I updated Chrome was, I don't know, five, six years ago, chances are if I was just telling it to use normal JavaScript, it, you know, it wouldn't work. Um, so this is going to transpile it from ES6 to Babel for me. And this is something that you can do via a, you know, a task runner like Gulp or Grunt coming from the JavaScript dev, dev environment. Uh, Webpack, you can do a Babel plugin for Webpack as well. You know, we can explore some of those options later. But just to take a quick look at some of the things that Babel does for us. Um, and, you know, again, uh, I say Babel because it's very popular. There are other other, other options here like Traceur, for example. But I think Babel is, uh, is, is very good to know. And, you know, let's take a look at Babel's website. So here I am on Babel.com. Babeljs.io. Definitely come here and check it out. Um, good resource for learning ES6, also known as ES2015. And they do have kind of a, a REPL, which if you're not sure what that stands for, it's read, eval, print, loop. It's, it's just a way of writing in the browser. They do have a REPL you can kind of tinker around with to play with ES6. Right? So just kind of tinker with the settings. Let's set it to ES2015, which again is ES6. And undo some of this stuff. Right. And here you can see this is kind of some simple ES6. We see an arrow function. This is new with ES6. And you see over on the right, in fact, let me see if I can kind of zoom in here to make it more legible. So on the left, ES6. On the right, this is kind of what it spits out. So it transpiles it, takes it from this, transforms it into regular old ES5, which will be supported in all browsers. You know, so it's really cool. It's nice to be able to do cutting edge stuff and support only the most recent of browsers, but you know there are always those users out there who are using older browsers. So it's really worthwhile in my mind to always transpile it, uh, at this point anyway, from ES6 into ES5. All right, so just to show another example of something, this kind of live updates. So we have consts available now in uh, ES6, which if you're not sure what this is, we're gonna be getting into that. But basically it's a way to declare you know, a variable so if I say const name equals Chris, for example, we can see that it just transpiles it over here to var name equals Chris. So you know this this REPL, it's a really good resource for seeing how ES6 transpiles into ES, ES5. Um, another one would be something like const say hi is a function, like so. You can write functions in this way in ES6, and here we can say console.log hi, for example. This is perfectly valid ES6 code, but of course this would not work for ES5. And you see it just transforms it into a regular old function uh, using strict mode. Right, so all this is happening behind the scenes in JSBin for us when we specify ES6 Babel. Um, it does this stuff for us. We don't really see it doing it, but it does happen. Next, just a note on our setup for JSBin here. So I will be using JSBin for much of this course because it's a nice resource to just kind of easily write some ES6 code. Um, don't have a lot of overhead. Don't need to tinker with one of those compilers. And you know, I would recommend you do the same. So it's, it's a really nice resource for learning. You can try out some ES6 code without having to configure a bigger overhead type app. And a lot of the code we write, it's gonna be you know, easily translatable for you to kind of put it into your app. So get the basics, plug it into your app, and then you'll be good to go. Now, in terms of setup on JSBin at the time of this writing, um, you know, even if you select ES6 Babel, you will probably get a linting error if you start to write, for example, const. Um, there's a couple errors here in that I don't have it assigned, but also notice the first one. It says const is available in ES6 or Mozilla JS extensions. And it's, it's because there's a built-in linter in JSBin called JSHint, 
And a linter, if you're not aware of what it does, it basically checks your code for errors. Uh, so in this case, it's telling us, hey, I don't really understand const. And a lot of text editors like Sublime Text or IDEs have built-in linters that you can activate or turn on or whatever. And in this case, I think even if I did write some valid code, for example, this is valid ES6, it's still giving me kind of a linting error here. And you know, it's a warning, so it's still gonna run, but it's just kind of annoying to kind of ha have an error here even though I know the code is correct. So that's easily fixable, that's just a JS bin setting. So if you go into your account preferences, so here I am in my account preferences, I can go to my JS hint settings. And if I zoom out, you can see that there is a settings tab next to it. But, but anyway, settings. And we can use the ES next settings it talked about. Um, so to enable it, you just do ES next in quotes like so. To enable ES next to be true. Now we go back to JS bin and we should not have any issues with our linter at this point. So now it's not giving us an issue anymore, uh, which is nice. And finally, I just like to say, you know, if you are an absolute beginner, you don't have much experience with JavaScript or programming in general, hang in there. Um, I know it seems overwhelming, and that's totally normal when you're learning something brand new, maybe concepts of programming or JavaScript itself. Hang in there. And what I would recommend is get those fingers on keys. You know, that's the best way to learn is just by doing. Um, do the example, write lots of code. Don't just do the examples I'm doing, but do plenty more examples as well. You know, expand it out. Take some code we have here, for example, and plug it into this babel.js.io REPL. Right, so if I just plug it in like so, this is a good way to learn what Babel is doing for us. You know, if you're interested in learning how ES5 is looking compared to the ES6, you know, just plug it in here. Play around with Babel.js. Play around with your tools. Use these charts. Use all your resources. Can I use? And, you know, just practice, practice, practice. Just get those fingers on the keys. Get practicing. Hang in there. Um, something will click eventually, and it's just going to start to make sense. You know, it, it does take time when you're learning something new, but, you know, stick with it, and uh, you can do it too. So, looking forward to having you guys on the course, and uh, let's jump right in. Mm -hmm.